So if a malicious actor knows the name of one of your internal packages and your repository is set up to pull from a public one and they upload a bigger version to the public repository, then the repository will decide that the malicious package is the one you want and that's what you will get installed. If for companies that are still using this, you need to check this. Uh, you could be a, <laughs> in a lot of risk. Alrighty. Hey, thanks so much, everyone tuning in. Hey, listen, if you have not checked out the last video in this little series and playlist and saga that we have going on here, it was a super cool demo that Carlos Pollup over from Halborn was showcasing how you could use code build with a custom Docker container, Docker image, Docker environment that you could use some man in the middle efforts and potentially swipe steal GitHub tokens, even within AWS. So sort of reverse what we were doing with CICD in the previous video. Videos. But man, I, I just think it's so crazy and cool that there are so many techniques and tradecraft for gaining access to new information, new sensitive data. Um, but in this video, look, let's turn it over. I want to pass the ball and give the baton to Ignacio. Uh, Ignacio Dominguez also over at Halborn. And you've got another super cool show and tell live demo for us for dependency confusion. Is that right? Yeah. So today we're going to be looking at an example in AWS Code Artifact. Uh, this is a service that AWS has that allows you to store your packages. So like NPM packages, PIP packages, even like Maven and Nugget, all those kinds of uh, different packages for different languages. So they allow you to store them in AWS. And that way your team is able to have like a private repository instead of having to publish all of their packages to public repositories like npm.js or, or whatever. You can just keep them to yourself and download them while you're building your pipelines. So normally the 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 way this works in companies is a company has a repo for the package, they submit a PR for that repo, it gets built and it gets deployed, it gets delivered. This is the CD when it means delivered. So it gets delivered to a repository, in this case internal in AWS, uh, with the service code, pipe, uh, code artifact. And then there's another pipeline that builds a, an application, for example, and that application uses this repository, uh, sorry, this package. So when they push to the repository of the new application, uh, the pipeline that is building that new application will go ahead, pull the dependency from code artifact and put it into a container image, for example, or, or build an executable with that package. So what we're going to achieve in this demo is probably remote code execution in developer machines, CICD pipelines, and maybe production, if people are not careful. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> it, it, the impact of this is huge, which is why it's so difficult to test. It's very difficult to test in a controlled way. Uh, dependency confusion is some, it's kind of new, uh, maybe two years old. And the first people that were trying it, I don't know how they, they had the, the courage to test it, like in real companies, <laughs> because the impact is so big and completely unknown to the tester. Like this dependency could be used in thousands of places and you're going to compromise all of them at the same time. So I guess we should first talk a bit about what dependency confusion is and then move into the actual uh, demo. Dependency confusion is when a company publishes their internal packages to a private repository and they have a cache in that repository. So it means that public dependencies that come from public repositories get cached in their private repository. That way they can sort of only use their private repository. So you, you connect to your private repository and pull all the dependencies through that. The issue comes when you have a private package and there's the same package with the same name in a public repository and you try to pull. Normally, the repositories will choose the latest version. So if a malicious actor knows the name of one of your internal packages and your repository is set up to pull from a public one and they upload a bigger version to the public repository, then the repository will decide that the malicious package is the one you want and that's what you will get installed. So I found AWS Code Artifact to be vulnerable to this uh, around December 2021. AWS acknowledged the issue and they started working on some features to fix it. Uh, they said it would be releasing in Q1. End of Q1 came and they had a beta. They had me test the beta. Uh, it was okay. The feature works really well. And at the end of like Q2, they, they put into general availability. So for everyone, the issue still remains for people that are using Code Artifact before that. So the new defaults are safe. The old defaults are not safe. So oh, wow. you... 
for companies that are still using this, you need to check this. Uh, you could be a, in a lot of risk. So let's go ahead and, and share my screen. Yeah, I'm stoked to see this. How recent was that change? You said like, so that would be Q2 of 2022. Is that right? Uh, Q2 of 2022, yes. Okay, wow. I have to think there are a handful of organizations or companies or businesses that probably had AWS stood up before last year. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I, I had to figure this out in one of my previous companies, and it was a pain to, to be out. Oh, man. Well, if you can crank up the tech size, I think we are yes. all ready to watch the show here. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully that's good enough. Perfect. Uh, so we have three different folders uh, here. Dodgy one, we're going to close for now. Uh, we have our package, CICD series. This is going to be the name of our package. Uh, we're talking about NPM packages now. Uh, this is completely the same for PIP. I haven't tested for Maven because I don't know Java, but I'm assuming it's going to be the same. And then we have our big team, which is going to be someone that uses our package. So in this case, the package is just a function called test that prints test function. Really interesting. And we can see here that the version is version 1.0.0. If we go to the victim, we'll be able to see that we are importing from the CICD series a package. We're importing the test function and we're calling it. And in the package.json, we should see a dependency on CICD series version 1.0.0. This little symbol here it's really important. This means that it will automatically update uh, your version. I'm not sure if it does major and minor versions, but it does minor versions for sure. So let's go ahead and just show how this works with the correct dependency installed. So I'm just going to run Node.js, uh, index.js, and this executed the text function from our package. So let me show you how this looks in AWS. Ooh. What is the assume command? I'm sorry, that's new to me. <laughs> yeah, this is a cool tool. It's called granted. And if you're using, if, if you need to change a lot between different AWS accounts, which I do constantly, yeah, it's super useful. It allows you to switch between them really fast. That's awesome. So here in my AWS account for testing, we have a code artifact domain and a repository. The repository is called CICD series, and it has one version, version 1.0.0. And if we look into the origin controls, we'll see that there is this didn't exist before. This is a new feature they introduced to fix this vulnerability. So you have two controls. You have the publish and the upstream. This repository is configured to have an upstream from nodejs.org, the normal public NPM repository. Uh, and it, the, in this package, we've set it to allow. Normally, if you were to create a new package right now and push to uh, code artifact, which uh, that's what we did here. Uh, that's why so we pushed this package directly to code artifact. It should it, it should be blocked instead of allow. Block is the default. Yeah, yeah it, the default for something that you upload directly to to code artifact is going to be blocked. In on the other hand, if you are caching a public package in code artifact, it will be allow upstream and block publish because there's a similar kind of issue. If you have uh, access to code artifact and you can push packages, you shouldn't be able to override public packages that are cached in this registry. So it's the same kind of issue, but the other way around. So in this case, I've changed it to allow, but this would be the default value if the company is old, like if the repository has existed since before uh, Q2 on, of 2022. So yeah, just showing that that's allow. Uh, I want to discard the changes, yes. And now going back to my code, we are going to go into the dodgy folder, and this is my malicious package. And it's the same test function. So the the only thing the attacker would need to know is that we have a test function and the name of the package. So I'm setting the same name of the package and mm. a version that's higher. This could be like 9999 or something. And it right. would choose the, the highest one. The only difference is what's going to be printed. And now we can go to that folder. And I need to log into the public NPM repository with NPM login registry. And I need to find my password. So we're now, uh, we can check npm config get registry. Uh, this didn't change, so I'm going to change it manually. What we're looking for here is instead of having the code artifact registry, we want to have the the public one. So we're basically setting the, rep the registry to be the public npm.js registry. And now we should be able to just do a simple npm publish. And this will go ahead and create in my npm account which is right here. Now the folder name is dodgy, but because of your package.json, given the name CICD series, I can see the version has been updated. Yeah. yeah. So we have version 1.0.1 here in npm.js. 
And in Code Artifact, we only have version 1.0.0, even if I refresh. So now if I go back to my victim and I, I have to switch back to the, the Code Artifact repository doing this AWS command, this should re-authenticate us to the Code Artifact registry and it's set correctly. So now if I were to do npm install of this package.json, it should get version 1.0.0, but it yeah. will get the 1.0.1. .1. So I'm just going to delete the node modules and the JSON. So it's like if we were to pull the repository normally, you would pull it just like this, and then you would do npm install. And when we do npm install, we should be able to see that it installed one package. And when we look at the package.json, we see that the node module that is it installed is version 1.0.1. Yeah. And now we do node index.js, attack successful. This is essentially a remote code execution. And this could happen like in CICD pipelines, in developers that are testing locally, in production services, the, the impact can be huge. And no one would know. <laughs> <laughs> like you're completely oblivious to it until yeah. it happens. Oh, dependency confusion is super scary. Yeah, no, I, I actually have a question for Ignacio. I don't know if it's something you can you have thought about. Um, so obviously this vulnerability is amazing, it's super dangerous, but you need to know the name of an internally used library. Would you recommend any technique to potential red teams? to find names of these internal libraries? Have you thought about that? So the best way I've thought about it and what I've seen done in the past is uh, GitHub dorks. So just shifting through, especially now that they have that new search API, probably even easier. Oh, yeah. So just looking for package files. Uh, also, if the companies are using things like React, by default, when you build a React app, it gets built with like, uh, I think they call it source maps, which is like a debugging feature that allows you to recover the original code you would be able to see the code, the, the dependency names there too. So th there's a couple of ways to, to find out. Nice. It sounds like I think even some companies might use like a natural schema or just like a normal naming standard, which isn't accurate by any means. But yeah, you uh, could just spam npm js <laughs> that are with thousands of different dependencies i don't know when this video will release but i think related to when we are recording uh pypy or the package installation stuff for pip uh just took down and like stopped user registration because they were getting so many malicious packages not strictly for dependency confusion i realize that is a little bit of a tangent but just because it was just being used and abused for a lot of those uh, yeah special <laughs> typo squatting is a is a big one yeah. uh, I've reported that to in a couple of clients where they missed they did the mistake instead of a really popular dependency for doing HTTP requesting in Node.js is Axios. And a lot of people yeah. were typing Axois. So the O <laughs> and the I, the, the wrong way around. And it was a malicious package. And NPM did put it down a couple of uh, months ago. Wow. But at some point, it was malicious. Dang. Have you used this in any of your tests? Are there any other best practices? I don't know what mitigations or anything else. But like this is one that just scares me. Because this looks very supply chain-esque for the whole whatever uh, incident response in, in cybercrime world. Yeah, so personally, I found only exploited this in my previous company, which uh, I worked for that company, so I knew what I was able to touch and not. Right. I would personally never have the courage to try this in a like a live red team operation <laughs> or, or some kind of pen test, uh, just because it's pretty unpredictable. If yeah. you don't have the correct information, you're probably going to break a lot of things and like stop all the developers from working, stop all the CICD pipelines. You, you can cause a big mess. And if I may, I feel like you have to be like really accurate and precise. Like you can't have any mistakes with with this because you kind of only have one shot to get that code to run and if you're like i don't know missing a stupid semicolon or something well like okay cool whatever the attack fumbled <laughs> i mean you can always just up the version one more uh, true true enough it, <laughs> wait it. for them to fire again yeah. Yeah. there's also a uh, uh, really smart technique here i did use the the test function so i had to know this name because the package the the victim was using it but you, there's some package managers i believe mp PM is one of them that allow you to run code on when you're installing. Ooh. So you could get RCE while the package is installing, not even having to get it like executed with Node. So just running the NPM install would get you RC instead of having that to That would be slick. The, the Node.js. That would be super dangerous, but so cool. <laughs> I would love to see that syntax. Hey, if anyone in the comments has it uh, and wants to share. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'd love to see that. But wow, my goodness. Thank you so much. Uh, I It's so crazy that we're diving into a whole lot of the other, I think, bundles that AWS and Amazon Web Services showcase. Uh, if I may, I'd love to ask you, because I feel like we've bebopped around between registry and code artifact. And I think you mentioned code commit. And there's so much to AWS. Is a whole lot of your job just kind of trying to explore and find out what each of these things do and then how to break and abuse it? Or... I don't know. How yeah. much have you covered in this point? It, it does happen still that some <laughs> clients come to me and they're using something that I've never seen. Yeah, uh, It's getting less common, but there's still things that I've never seen. But normally it's straightforward to just look into the documentation and do some testing, figure out what the important security takeaways are and just let the client know what they're doing good and what they're not doing so good. Goodness gracious. Yeah, about AWS services, I will say that they are like network services. If you know the top 1%, you will understand the 99% of the infrastructure of people in AWS because most of the people will use just the same one. It's very weird when you find people using things that are not so common. Well, goodness. I think next up, we've got even more super cool fireworks and things to showcase. And again, I'm super duper grateful for both of you doing some show and tell. Hey, uh, helping me get schooled up and learn a little bit of something new. Uh, And what's next? I think we'll eventually, I don't know, maybe dive into some Terraform, see how this infrastructure is built. And then even with that, how that might be able to be manipulated. (laughs) So Terraform next. Yes. Sweet. Looking forward to it. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.